was so worried. I kept ringing that bell and, and no one answered. I thought something happened to little Johnny. He's asleep. Oh, we did, both were. Did I wake you up? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what's wrong. I've just been so upset since this whole thing with, with Edmund and, and, and Jill. And, oh, I just wanted to see little Johnny was all right. You could have phoned. What? Oh, forget it. It's just terrible, isn't it? Just awful. Have you heard anything else yet? Look, I don't know. Uh, if I guess Maeve would call if, you know, something happened. <sighs> yeah. Maeve and Johnny up in Washington at Frank swearing in, and, and then the next thing I hear, they're at Long Island someplace. Well, Ray Woodard flew him up in her private jet, and then her, her car picked him up at the airport. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a nice way to live, I guess. It's going to be a long time before I'll be able to live like that. Why don't you go over to the hospital if you really want to know what's going on? Oh, no, but that would be interfering. <sighs> Flowers from Wes Leonard? And boxes of candy and forgive me notes. <sighs> I, uh, don't believe it. After the column that he wrote about Frank, I mean, with all those criminals, and you'll allow these in your house? Well, they came today, and uh, flowers in this house today seemed like a good idea. Yeah, but from Wes Leonard. I like roses. <laughs> you know, you are amazing. I don't know how you get away with the things that you do. I, I could never do them. I mean, things like like having an enemy of the family, gifts from him all over your house, and, and the uh, planning development thing. I mean, how do you do it? How do you? Well, the secret is plenty of sleep. Sleep? How could you sleep at a time like now? Dee, working eight hours a day on the job and spending nights working on this project for Frank, plus having this family tragedy to deal with, believe me, you get sort of tired. Oh, and, uh, you'd like to go back to bed now? Okay, well, I'll be leaving in just a few minutes. <clears throat> now, this, uh, little plan of uh, Frank that he's working on? Uh, well, I'm... Is it a project, or what is yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Funny you should ask, because... Do you remember that woman, Ethel Green, who uh, was such a help to Frank in this district during his election? Uh, well, she had a little problem, and she brought it to Frank, who didn't have any time to deal with it, so I volunteered. Oh, I... And exactly what, what sort of problem is this? Well, there's five buildings owned by the C&P Realty Corporation. And these people have been without heat or hot water for six weeks. Oh. Those poor people. Yeah. Poor and cold oh. people. I've been talking to them, advising them of their legal rights. And I suggested that the only way they can force the landlord into fixing that boiler is if they go ahead and start a rent strike. Oh, and this is what you've been doing, huh? Yeah, they can win. If they fight back, all they gotta do is just organize. And does the C&P Realty, do they, do they know what you're doing? Oh, yeah. We had a visit from one of their uh, people. He came in, huffing and puffing, throwing his weight around, threatening everybody by saying, you, you people, just keep what you're doing. You're gonna have big trouble. <laughs> and, and I take it you got very, very scared. Oh, yes, well, I was, uh, apprehensive. But when I got back here, that passed. Yeah. You felt safe here, huh? You've always felt yeah. safe here. The problem is, what's going to happen next time you have to go uptown, huh? With those big people. Oh, look, I'm not a total fool. No. <laughs> next time I go uptown it, at night, I won't be alone. Oh, and, uh, are you going to find some other cuckoo to go with you? Yes. Jack Finelli. Jack Finelli is going to ride shotgun with you when you go uptown? Uh-huh. <laughs> he volunteered. As a matter of fact, Dee, he insisted. <laughs> well, you're kidding. I uh, bet Mary isn't going to like this one. <laughs>